Hello everyone, welcome to Crafternoon. I'm Miss Amy from the Wapa Valley Library. I'm very glad you've joined me. Today we will be painting a nice little sunset in watercolor, similar to this one here. All right, okay. So, to paint along, you will need just a couple of things. We've got our water and we have our paints. And I'm using a set that's just like the ones you used at school. Um, paper, a light colored crayon, and a paintbrush. And one thing I like about this particular paintbrush is that it comes to a nice point there at the end and it's big and bushy so it holds lots of water which is important. Okay and the paper I'm using here is um, amateur watercolor paper, something that was bought at like a big box store. Um, you don't need professional paper. Um, thicker paper is a little bit better because it doesn't wrinkle as you're using water all over it, but um, you can use any paper, give it a try and see what happens. All right, so um, what we're doing today is uh, we're going to do a technique called wax resist, which is why I had you get your crayon out. And it could be white, light colored, could be yellow. What we're doing with the crayon is we're using it to leave some of the paper white as we paint over the top of it um, because the wax doesn't like the watercolor paper paint. Okay, so um, here's another way you can use wax resist technique. You can see here that um, I've drawn in the clouds up there in the sky and then if you look down here at the bottom you see the little flowers and specks in the grass. Okay, all right, so I'm going to show you on black paper, first of all, what we're doing so you can see it really well. And you can see we've got a circle here and then some squiggles down here. So that's what we're going to do on our paper. All right, so I'm going to put it on here. Go ahead and press nice and hard as you're doing this. Um, you can do it in the middle of the paper like I'm doing here. You can do it off to the side so that your sun and reflections are on the side of the paper like um, it was done in the example. I've got my circle. I'm doing my little squiggle here. Add a couple dots. Okay. All right. So we are ready to paint. Okay. So I'll get my brush really wet. And the first thing you do is you wet down your paper. You don't need to get all the way to the edge of the paper. But you fill your paper up with water. You don't want to get it so wet that you end up with puddles, but you do want the paper to be wet. You can see my paper starting to curl up a little bit, but that's okay. okay and you can probably see the wax resisting the water which is what it'll do later when we put paint on top of it okay so I've got my paper nice and wet and I think I'm gonna go for an orange sunset like we like was done in the example so I'm gonna get some orange on my paintbrush and I'm gonna mix my orange with my yellow a little bit because that's a little bit more orange than I really actually want. So get some yellow. And tone it down just a little bit. All right. Okay. So you fill your paintbrush up with as much paint as it will hold. And we're going to start here in the middle. I'm going to just go from one side to the other of the wet area some more of my paint here and we're going to go full strength paint right here in the middle you can start seeing the sun and the reflections showing up okay a little bit more orange all right okay so the next step is I'm going to dip my paintbrush back into the water I'm not going to swish I don't want the paint to come off the brush but I do want a little bit more water onto the brush so I dip really quick 
and then I bring it back down here and right up against the paint that I just put down I'm gonna do a stripe right there and you can see it's getting a little bit lighter than it was down here and I'm gonna do the same thing over here underneath okay and then dip again go up here to the top do a stripe or two of water and down below and one more time dip this time I'm going to go all the way up to the top of where I watered the paper and down here I'm going to go all the way to the bottom Oops, paintbrush is getting dry okay all right, so we are done with step one. And uh, at this point would be the time to do your mindfulness practice and watch the paint dry, because uh, the next step needs to be done on top of the paint being dry. Uh, we don't have time for that, so I have one that I prepared earlier. Okay, so you can see that the water and the paint have worked together to kind of make a soft transition from dark in the center to lighter as you go to the top and the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna put in our mountains to start with. And so I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit on the brown side. You could make them blue or purple, um, whatever color you want, but I'm gonna mix my brown with the orangey yellow that I used earlier because I think that's a nice color. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a horizon line right here where the mountains touch the water. And try to do a straight line. It doesn't have to be super straight. And we can see it's a little bit wavy right there. I think I'm gonna try to straighten that out. Okay, all right, so we got a line there. And now I'm gonna put the tops of the mountains like that and come over here. Mine are moundy, they're not sharp pointy mountains because we're in the Mojave Desert and the mountains get a little moundy out here. So, I guess you could say we're maybe doing a painting of Lake Mead. Okay. All right, got that in there nice. We don't need to put a lot of detail in there because the mountains are far away and so we can't see a lot of detail. All right, brush my paint, wash my paintbrush off. Now you can see I've kind of got a blackish brown color here already um, from painting earlier. So I'm getting it wet again so I can use it. Uh, I'm gonna make some more. So what we're gonna do is make um, some mountain, not some mountains, uh, tree, uh, maybe something bushy or rocky on the other side. We're going to use a dark color. Um, sometimes I like to mix black and blue together. Black and brown works nice. Or straight black if you want to have a really high contrast. Okay. Now normally I would wait for these mountains to dry, but I'm not going to do that here. So my uh, trees are going to bleed into a little bit to the mountains. That's okay because we're just playing around here. It's just practice. Okay, so we're going to start down here at the bottom and push down with the paintbrush. And as we go up closer to the top where the branches are going to come off, we push down less and less and less so that we're just using the top, the point of the paintbrush. Get a little bit more paint. Start down here at the trunk again. You can see the mountains and the, the, the tree are kind of pushing to bleeding in together, but that's okay. So, okay. And then I think we'll do another branchy thing up this way. Maybe something coming up like that. Ooh, that looks good. I like that. Okay. And then you can add smaller branches. Coming off of there, and then you can start doing little twiggy things. Let's 
All right, look at that. Okay, we're gonna stop there. And then I need to make some more black here. Ooh, see, that's really dark. That's why I like to add the blue and the brown to it. A little bit of blue. Okay. And over here on the other side, um, I think we will do kind of some moundy mountainy bushy stuff right here. So not a tree, nothing with defined branches, just a nice little mound. Like that. And so the reason we put something here at the front is because it helps give us more of an illusion of depth. So we have the front layer where the trees are, we have the medium layer um, where the lake and the mountain is, and then the uh, far layer, which is the sky and the sun, which we know is going to go down behind the mountain. So, okay, got that there. And now to add even more texture, and uh, we're gonna add some grass here. And we will put some grass growing on the, uh, on the, the mound of stuff here. Okay, let's see. And because this is up close, but it's dark and in shadow, there's also not as much detail. And I might add a little bit more branchy stuff over here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I think I'm done. What do you think? I kind of like it. I like this, how the tree kind of goes like that. But anyway, there you go. As you can see, you don't need professional art supplies to make a really nice little painting. Um, yeah, go ahead. You can try this, different techniques, um, different things. If you don't like what how your um, painting has turned out, it's just paper. It's not that big a deal. You can throw it out, do something else. You can paint something on the back. And then when you really like what you've done, um, you can share it with others if you want or keep it for yourself. But thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you have a good time um, trying out the techniques that I showed you today. And we'll see you later.